What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we're checking out the Star Pro by Freemax. That's right, YouTube. Today we're checking out the Star Pro by Freemax. I am so excited to bring you this review. A little bit of a disclaimer first, though, I will say this. For once, I'm actually wearing the same clothing as what I am in the end of the video. And the reason I know that is because I'm a fucking idiot and I actually recorded the end of the video first thinking I'd already, already actually done the unboxing section of this, uh, which I usually do when I first get a tank. Uh, with this one, I actually dug right in. So just a disclaimer, but it actually works out in our favor because the one thing I forgot to do was compare the vapor production uh, in person with the Star Pro and my favorite tank at the moment, the Crown. So let's do that right now, and then what we'll do is we'll go down and dirty and check out what you get in the box. So here we go. This is the Star Pro first up. Pretty good. Let's check out the Crown. This is at 80 watts, uh, 79.9 actually. Uh, it is the 0.25 ohm coil, and it's hitting at 4.8 volts. And this is 100% battery life on this one, so this should give you an idea. Let's hit it. And also, just a disclaimer, they're both using the exact same juice, which is my home remedy. Uh, this is a strawberry custard juice, which is absolutely amazing, but I um, uh, don't mean don't mean toot my own horn too much. In fact, I actually say that at the end of this video, too. That's kind of weird. Anyways, here's the Crown Tank. This is the vapor production getting at 80 watts. Pretty good. They are both pretty good. And you know what, just for shits and giggles. Bam! There it is. All right guys, let's get down and dirty with the Star Pro and check out what you get in the box. All right guys, we are down and dirty with the Star Pro. Here it is. I just cleaned it up, just emptied out all the juice, put it back in the packaging so you could see what it looks like, brand new. Uh, basically what you get here you get the 0.25 ohm coil, which I used a little bit, and the 0.15 ohm coil, which is kind of my go-to coil right now. Uh, I do really like it. A little bit of tips here. Uh, actually, this is pretty good. This is a warning, too, so uh, make sure you... Uh, are, again, these coils are low resistance and are not suitable for use with low drain or low quality batteries. This I like that, actually. I'll let you pause if you want to read the rest, but I really do like that. Freemax, of course, is a manufacturer. The Star Pro is the tank. And here we see the back of this. So we have temperature control, the NI200, uh, dual vertical coils and bottom vertical coils, uh, top E juice refill design, which is nice, wide bore AFC drip tip, um, working on high power, which is also good, and pure taste, huge cloud. And uh, we just saw in the intro to that video, it seems to deliver. So components, you get the pro tank, you get a replacement coil, you get the manual, and you get the box. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what you get. Let's open it up. I cleaned it up a little bit, but it might be a little bit dirty still. Um, anyways, let's uh, take the tank, put it aside for a second. We got another coil in here. Again, a little grungy, but it's not too, too bad. And uh, let's open it up and check out the user manual real quick. We don't want to spend too much time in it because no one really cares about it. All right, so here's user manual. This is what it looks like. Star Pro. Folds out just like that. On this page, you have the contents, you have the basic information here, 0.15 ohm, recommended 20 to 100 watts, 0.25 ohm, 20 to 80 watts, and uh, normal sub-ohm resistance. Uh, this is for uh, 0.25 and 0.5 ohm coils, which are what you get from like the Magnus or the, the current Freemax uh, star. And uh, they also, just to note, the original coils do fit in this one as well, so that's kind of nice as well. You also have a diagram. No one really cares about this shit, so I'm just going to keep on going. The coil heads and all their fun little features. Uh, and then the airflow control as well. On the back, a little bit more information. Again, if you want to pause it here, by all means, this is just how to fill a tank. I'm pretty sure most of us know how to do it by now, but just in case, you can pause the video to read it. Uh, and about replacing coils, it, again, it's just it's how to replace a coil. Get, we're pretty much all familiar with that, so again, I'm not going to read that. If you're not, go ahead and read that and uh, pause the video there. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the coils first. This is the 0.5 ohm, or 0.25 ohm uh, NI200 coil. I'll see if I can get it to focus here. 
you have Freemax on that side, if you can see that. And then on this side, you have the actual resistance and the, there we go, 0.25 ohm and the recommended wattage. Ni200, of course. Inside the coil, you do have the vertical coil, which is nice. Uh, cotton's pretty clean, actually, considering I vaped it for about an hour or so. Uh, it's not too bad. And uh, bottom pin connection for the, uh, or the bottom connection for the coil itself. We'll push that out of the way. We don't care about that either. Uh, let's look at a few things here. So we have the adjustable airflow control. Very clicky, like that. Bottom pin connection just barely sticks out, much like the Magnus and the Star. Uh, so I do recommend not using this on a hybrid mod. And uh, that's just my recommendation, of course, but I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't trust it. That kind of uh, connection point, it's not far enough for me. But um, so again, don't use it on hybrid. Just be safe, guys. Next is the drip tip. So here's the drip tip. One thing I will say is that it is a proprietary drip tip and you can see just the uh, airflow holes through it and you'll see airflow holes along here. That's one of the things I don't usually like. I don't like when it's proprietary and I don't like when, uh, when manufacturers put the juice or put airflow controls in the mouthpiece or in the drip tip. I just don't like that I'm not a fan of it. You might, I don't. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. You also have this on off valve. So you can see I'm kind of turning it a little bit. This is on, this is off. If you leave it on and you have the tank on its side, it will leak, so just keep that in mind. If you have it off, uh, it doesn't leak. It's actually pretty good, so that's one thing I've noticed. I lost about half, tank, uh, half a tank of juice because I left it on by accident. And the tricky thing is, and I'll show you here in a sec, but when I unscrew this to do top fill, actually, let me just show you a quick glance of what it looks like if I can see it from up here. Again, it's a little, ju a little juicy, but you can see on, off, it is currently off now, it was on, and uh, there should be a little arrow, you can kind of see it just below that air hole there. And uh, again, now it's on. So one of the things I noticed is that when you're, or when you're taking it off, it'll automatically go to off, like this switch, because you're basically having to use this as leverage. If you put it on, you can see, you get to a certain point, you can even see the arrow moving, and it will turn on when it's closing. That's one thing I don't like because if you are filling up your liquid, you have to remember every time after the t after the cap is tightened to turn it back off. And that doesn't loosen the the uh, top or the cap, it just turns it on and off. But you will have to use that as leverage, so just keep that in mind. Here is the top fill component. You have two pretty decent sized uh, juice holes there. And uh, you have this bottom part. I believe this is what goes on and off, this little hole here. I don't know how it works, but somehow it works. And uh, that is good to know. So we'll take that apart, put that off to the side. Let's uh, let's take the top piece off and the glass. There we go, as I bump the camera as usual. So we take that part off and you get basically the chimney. This first thing you see, that's how it screws on is by the chimney. Here's the glass. And you can see here the, uh, the screw thingies. <laughs> um, Sorry, the threading was the word I was looking for. The threading to uh, screw the cap on and off. Uh, let's take off the bottom piece and hopefully we can get it. Looks like it's coming off no problem. Take off the bottom piece. There's your coil. Again, I've been using this for about five or six days now and uh, it's a little bit gunky. I usually like to show a clean coil, so I apologize for that, but just a heads up. One thing I've noticed though in this is you can kind of see it springing in and out, this piece. This basically acts as an adjuster for this bottom part right here. I don't know how that works. I think it has, creates like a suction effect on the coil so that when you are uh, tipping it upside down, for example, changing out the coil, it doesn't leak. Um, that would be my guess. I might be wrong. I don't know, but I would assume it basically creates a lock onto the coil. So when it is tipped upside down, it doesn't all flow in through to the uh, top fill portion or through these holes. Again, I don't know for sure. I'm assuming the on off button has something to do with that as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if this also helps. And in fact, this might be what's um, actually being used when you hit on off. It might be locking this into place. So just a heads up on that. Uh, next we have the coil here. This is the 0.15 as I mentioned. It's pretty grungy right now, but that's okay. Here we go. This is the coil. You can see here, if I can get it to focus with all the grunge on it. Freemax on that side. And there's the, uh, the resistance on there. You can kind of see it's 0.15 ohms, 20 to 100, 20 to 100 watts looks like, and uh, Ni200 of course as well. So there you go, there you have it. 
Uh, let's screw it in, put it back together, and uh, talk about what else is on here. Uh, while I'm doing this, actually, one thing to know is that I, and I'm trying to keep the, I know I've already done the ending to this, guys, so I apologize. I'm trying not to spoil anything, but basically I will say this. Um, one thing I will say is that I do not usually like temp control devices, so keep that in mind for the rest of the review. I don't usually like it. I'm one of the pickiest people in the world when it comes to temp control. Uh, I think it's overrated. I basically am the biggest hater on it out of anyone, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that, but to date of all the temp control uh, tanks I've used, or the nickel wire I've used, or the titanium wire, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to call it temp control for now because it's, it's easier to, to, to just generalize it because um, there are different coils and everything out there. I don't really like temp control. Even when I build it myself, I just cannot get the uh, temp control to really you know, make me want to come back to it. So with that in mind, I, I, I will say this. I was going into this tank completely... Um, expecting the worst because i am not usually a big fan of temp control and uh, i'll talk about that when we go up top again but basically i i just want to put that out there because it may make a difference on the overall review if you know that so keep that in mind going forward um anyway so that's pretty much the tank itself again you know i'll talk about the pros and cons when we get up top but that's the tank there it is it retails for i think around 40 bucks canadian 40 to 50 bucks canadian i believe um, I don't actually know this was actually given to me to review, so I'm really happy about that. And a uh, big thank you to the person who gave it to me. I'm not going to name any names, but again, big thank you to them uh, if you're watching this. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go back up top and finish this review off. All right, YouTube, we are back up top with the Star Pro by Freemax. I got to tell you guys, okay, I know what you're all thinking. You're all asking the same question. How does someone who absolutely despises temperature control, feel about this tank right here, the Star Pro? Well, that's a good question, all right? Let's get into it and let's talk about the pros and cons first and I'll get to my final thoughts at the end of this. But I'm, I'm gonna be honest, okay? I kept an open mind and I'll leave it at that, okay? So, some pros and cons. Uh, first of all, pro, I love the design of this tank. It's awesome. Uh, the tank itself is absolutely beautiful. It's a great design. Very uh, nice little tank. The coils are, of course, what pretty much everyone wants to know about, and the question is, how do they hold up? I got two coils. I got the 0.15 ohm and the 0.25 ohm, both of them nickel, uh, NI200 coils, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they are both NI200. Uh, and I will be honest, for a temp control device, I'm not exactly disappointed. I know, it's crazy, but seriously, guys, this, this tank has surpassed my expectations by so much, I can't even measure it, okay? Someone who, who went in, you know, hating temp control, thinking there was no benefit to it, it's pointless, it's useless, using a device, I'm um, using the EVIC VT, which is what I've been vaping it on, it's really the only temp control device I have now, after my IPV she kind of shit the bed, so um, this is what I have left, but it's working well on here and it's working great. I'm gonna take a hit off this real quick and show you what I mean. So much flavor, the vapor density is there. This is the 0.15 ohm coil I'm vaping on right now. It was my preferred coil for sure, but the 0.25 was nothing to go, you know, nothing to complain about. It was a very good coil. The 0.15 was just my, it's got my personal preference over it. Uh, I gotta tell you guys, I put, I'm putting this review out a little bit early. It's only been about five or six days since I got this tank. And usually I like to try and run out a coil or at least go like a week and a half straight on the same coil like I did with the crown tank. Um, with this one, I haven't had that chance to really test or push the coil to the limits yet. I'm vaping at 600 degrees Fahrenheit on EVIC, which of course works out to like three, 400 degrees because it takes so long to ramp up. Um, but again, that's another review, so I'll save that for later. Basically, what I will say is this. This tank has changed my perception on the temp control stuff. This is the first temp control coil I genuinely like and I love carrying around with me. I've carried this device around with me more in the last six days or whatever it's been since I got this tank, since I, I mean, pretty much than, than what I did with, with having the EVIC itself or having the IPv4 with itself. I've used this tank more than I've used my own nickel builds on say the IPv4 or whatever. This tank is just far superior to any kind of nickel I've ever worked with. It's far superior to any kind of temp control device I've ever worked with um, or temp control tank. 
Uh, pros, I mean, like I said, the coils are awesome. I'm still getting the same flavor I got from day one, which is way more than I can say about Canthal. And now I kind of see the benefit of temp control. You're not burning your coils. You're not doing excessive heat. It really is helping you keep that flavor from day one till whenever the coil dies out, I would assume. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, it's been six days, the coil's still going strong. I've been primarily using the 0.15, the 0.25 I threw in there for a little bit just to test it out. But I mean, the 0.15 has me sold on this. All I can say is good job, Freemax. You guys put out a kick-ass product, okay? This is something that I didn't expect to like, that I love. This has actually become my second favorite tank. And it may even, once I get a better temp control mod, it may even surpass the crown tank. That is how crazy it sounds. Now at, at the moment on this mod in particular, the Evic VT, it has not surpassed the crown tank. The crown tank is still my favorite tank, but this is a very, very close second. And I mean very close. The flavor in this is fantastic. The density surprised me. I've, I've used temp control before, and my biggest downside to temp control in the past was the flavor just isn't dense enough, in the, or the, the vapor wasn't dense enough. And in this tank, it really is. It hits you but in a good way, it's very fulfilling. It's not like a throw hit hit you. I just mean that it's a very fulfilling vape when you have it. And it's not too hot, it's keeping it at the perfect temperature for me. I'm using my juice in it right now, which is like a 75-25 mix. Uh, I've used other juices in here, but I, I mean, I don't know, I'm not trying to toot my, horn, my own horn or anything, but this juice is by far my favorite now. I love it, I'm so happy with how it turned out, but I'm going off topic again. Uh, so yeah, some more pros. I mean, the filling on this is top fill, which is fantastic. I love top fill. I, it's been a while since I've had a top fill tank um, next before the crown that really blew me away. I've had other top fill tanks so far, and I have a couple coming up for review that I'll talk about in another video. Um, in fact, some of those actually should have been out sooner, but I'm pushing them off a little bit just to get this one out because I can't say enough good things about it. This tank is finally starting to get you know more recognition, or not more recognition, but it's finally starting to get more people. Uh, interested in it, more people are hearing about it. So I wanted to put this out before the, you know, before any of you guys made the decision to purchase or not. I figured you, you'd probably want to have at least one review out uh, to at least look over, maybe a couple. I don't know if anyone else put a review out on this yet, but if they haven't, I mean, I doubt I'm the first one. I would be shocked if I was the first one. But again, this tank is just absolutely amazing. I love it. it it's, I mean, pros, what else can I say? The airflow is perfect in it. One thing I noticed about this tank, as opposed to the Magnus, is that the airflow actually goes right through. The Magnus kind of had the coil blocking the airflow on, on each side, so you couldn't really see through it. This one, I can actually see through it um, to a certain degree. I mean, don't get me wrong, you still have the, the connection pin and everything in the way, but it's, it goes around it, and you can kind of see where it meets on the other side, which is kind of nice. Uh, the airflow ring, clicky. Hopefully you can hear that. Uh, the connection is true the connection seems good pretty much the only con i can think of so we're going to the cons next i guess because i can't think of anything else it's pro i'm sure i'm forgetting something uh but let's go to the cons there's two cons here for me they're not a big deal uh some people may disagree but for me i actually don't mind it the first con let's talk about uh the drip tip now if you can see or if you saw in the unboxing video you have these little airflow holes on the uh top of the drip tip or just on the uh, connection part of the drip tip and it's also a really weird connection or a really weird drip tip as well that has holes in it as well and what you're supposed to do is line the holes up and it gives you more airflow now for me someone who loves airflow you'd think i'd be using it a lot more but i don't i just find that these airflow dripper or drip tips that they're coming out with are just killing the flavor i love the airflow closed off on the drip tip i love it wide open on the tank that's how i vape all you have to do to Close it, it's just turn it a little bit and it'll either open up or close depending on uh, where the drip tip sits. So again, now it's all closed. It, the airflow in here, like I said, it's kind of a gimmick thing to me. I don't really like that about any tanks. I know I think it was the Aspire Atlantis that came out with that as well. And I just didn't like it. And of course with that, it also becomes a proprietary drip tip as well, which just makes it a little bit of a con for me. Is it bearable though? Yes, it, there's, that's not, you know, to me at least, that's definitely not a reason not to buy this tank. It's just an annoyance, and like I said, all you do is turn it, and you'll close off the airflow. Simple enough, but again, I wish you could have had your own drip tip on here, and it would have worked okay. I just find that that little touch would have made it just that much better, and ironically, I believe, and, and I, I would assume at least, that they put this in to be a feature, and yet it's more of a hindrance. Just my opinion on it. Uh, next thing I wanna talk about is this open-close valve up top. 
you basically turn it to close it or turn it to open it um, either way and basically what you're doing is closing off the juice well uh, I'm actually not even sure how it works I've tried to open and close it you know with the lid off and it doesn't do anything I assume and I could be wrong I assume what you're doing is opening and closing the uh, juice valve where you're gonna pour your juice in again I could be wrong guys don't don't blame me if I'm wrong just all I know is you want to keep it closed I basically keep mine closed all the time um, I left it open once and I lost like half my juice out of it so clearly it's preventing it from leaking somehow as far as how I don't know but it is preventing it from leaking so it's a bit of a negative to have that feature but at the same time I don't know how it works so I can't really comment on um, how effective it is or if they could have gone around it maybe this is the only way they could have done it in that case I can't blame them but either way it's a bit of a piss off when you lose half your juice um, because you left the valve open, especially when you're vaping the bird brain, which I'm already out of after like one day, and that definitely contributed to it. But that's a whole other story. Um, anyways, so yeah, so I mean, open and close portion, I don't like it, but at the same time, you know, who the fuck am I to judge, right? Like, I'm, I'm who am I? I'm not a fucking engineer or something. But anyways, yeah, so the open and close valve, a little bit of a piss off, but at the same time, as long as you remember to always keep it closed, you're fine. Uh, the juice capacity in this, I believe it's 4.5 or 4.8 mils. I think it's 4.8, just like the Magnus. It's got the same uh, juice capacity as the Magnus or the Star, if, if that's what you're having, or if that's what you're using, depending on where you are and depending on what was available to you. It's got the same juice capacity. It does drink juice pretty quickly. I'm already pretty much almost out. So I'll have to fill it up, which I'll just do on camera right now. May as well. I think I already did it in my unboxing, but uh, maybe not. And uh, let's just fill it up real quick. Take the cap off. Throw this in here, fill her up, she's good. Twist it back on, twist it back on, there we go. And make sure it's closed, because the problem is when you twist it back on, you use the uh, on off switch for leverage, at least I do, um, and you will open it up every time you, you close the lid, or you, or you put the top back on. Just keep that in mind, remember to always turn it, um, counterclockwise I guess counterclockwise uh, after you've tightened it up just to make sure it's closed off apart from that I mean overall let's I, let's just get to the point here do I recommend this yeah I do and that's surprising for me I can't believe I'm recommending a temp control device right now because I would have never thought I'd ever recommend a temp control coil or a nickel coil if you want to call it that or a titanium coil because I've tried them all I don't like them this one I like this is the first uh, nickel coil or any sort of temp control coil and I know that's not the right way to say it, but screw that fuck it Just I'm gonna call it temp control coil because I feel like it <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, this is the first temp control coil. I like I like the point top two five even it's not bad It's still a good vape, but I do prefer the point one five. That's just my preference. You may like the point two five better I like the point one five uh, I did try and vape this on a regular device because it is point one five still vapeable on a lot of devices out there I don't recommend it, and I will say this, um, you are definitely being more susceptible to burning your cotton in your wick uh, if you do that, because without the temp control, you're not gonna keep that flavor going. I tried it, it was okay, I didn't burn anything, but I started to realize after a couple puffs that I shouldn't be doing this if I wanna keep the flavor as good as what it is. So I've switched back to temp control, and that was okay. Uh, apart from that, like I said, I recommend it. If I lost this today, would I go out and buy another one? Absolutely. I'd buy 10 of these if I could. I, I want this to be like my only tank next to the crown. If I had like five of these and five crowns, I would be set. I'd have different juice in each of them and just keep vaping on all of them. The coil, like the, the flavor is just gonna be so good in each of them. You're not switching juices, but I'm living in a daydream right now. So let's just get past that. Yes, I recommend it. If you have this, if you have these available near you right now, go get one. I promise you will not be disappointed. Like I said, if it, if it if it's made me a believer in temp control, it can make anyone a believer in temp control because I was the biggest hater on that stuff. And finally, I found the device that really does a justice to temp control. And it's a Star Pro. So with that being said, guys, until next time, happy vaping.